Hi guys, welcome to today's Pit Stops case. My name is Samuel Odos, I'm a current foundation year doctor. The case I'll be discussing today is based on a pulmonary embolism. What we'll do is we'll first of all define what this is, we'll talk about some of the signs and symptoms, we'll talk about risk factors, investigations, and how you would treat such patients. So, to start off, how do we define a P? So, a P stands for a pulmonary embolism or a pulmonary embolism, it's a clot in the lung. Where this clot would usually originate from is in the lower limbs and in the pelvic area where a clot would build up in the venous system, it would then shoot off, it will travel into the right heart, from there it goes into the lung and it will block off a vasculature segment of the lung. Once it does this, we can't oxygenate that part of the lung. The blood that's coming through won't have any oxygen and as a result you can have many signs and symptoms. But before we go on to what signs and symptoms you can have, we'll just talk more about the risk factors for a PE. So the most common risk factor that we can think of when patients are more predisposed to having PEs are things such as recent surgery because you'll be more immobile. You can have clotting disorders. So these are things that you can be born with and things that can be acquired later on in life. The other risk factor is pregnancy. So patients that are pregnant are more likely to suffer from a PE or more likely to develop a PE as a result. Uh, further on, if we're thinking about risk, risk factors, fractures of the long bone, especially in the legs and in the thighs, uh, predispose you to a PE as well. So when we have a clot in the lung, what are some of the signs and symptoms that we would expect from our patients? So the symptoms that patients usually complain about, they come in with shortness of breath. So, and that makes sense because they're getting less oxygen into their blood, they feel short of breath. The other sign that they might complain about is pleuritic chest pain. And we say when we say pleuritic chest pain, we mean pain that gets worse when you breathe in because the pleura is getting irritated. That's a covering of the lung. The other sign might be they might have a cough. They might cough up blood, which is known as hemoptysis. So when we have a patient with these symptoms, we like to think about what could the possible causes be and P is at the top of that list. And if we have a patient with these symptoms and if they've had a recent um, long trip, which again links into the risk factor of being immobile sitting somewhere for a long period of time, then we start to think we start to think about a PE. So if we have a patient with these settings and we see these symptoms, what are some of the signs that we would see as a doctor? So we can see that they might have a low blood pressure. The low blood pressure can originate from the fact that if there's a clot in the lung, the right heart is working harder to push blood through the lung to get the blood oxygenated. And as a result, you might have right heart failure and you might have low blood pressure. The second thing that we'd see is we might see that the patient is physically cyanosed. So this can be blue lips, blue fingers and this just means that the level of oxygen in the blood is critically low. Further on if we actually examine the patient we might actually hear a pleural rub. This is a very rare sign but it's just something to bear in mind I think for us as doctors. The signs that we would like to talk about further is if you look at their blood pressure, their blood pressure would usually be low. If you look at their oxygen saturation um, that would usually be low as well. If you do an ECG for patients with a P, the most common finding is actually tachycardia or a normal ECG. Uh, if we do a chest x-ray, now you might think, why are we doing a chest x-ray? Can we see a clot in the chest x-ray? No. The reason why we do a chest x-ray with any patient with any chest problems is to rule out other sinister things that we can see on a chest x-ray. So this can be a pneumonia, this can be fluid in the pleural space, this can be air in the pleural space. So we do a chest x-ray to rule out these other conditions. So we have this patient with these signs and symptoms and we think it's a P. What are we going to do next? So what we can do is we can actually ascertain their risk factor or their risk score um, for a PE and this is called a well score for a PE. So there's a list of things that you go through and you work out what their, their risk factor is and it would give you a number and we're more or likely inclined to think this is a PE or this is not a PE. If we have a patient that has a PE, we would like to confirm our diagnosis. So. The gold standard diagnostic test for a PE is called a CTPA, which is a CT pulmonary angiogram, which looks at the vasculature in the lungs and sees where filling defects are, and that's due to a clot in the lung. 
Now, there are circumstances where a patient can't have this scan. For example, in pregnant ladies um, who don't want to put their child, their unborn child, in the way of harmful radiation, they might request a different type of scan. Or if we're doing a CTPA scan, we usually inject contrast. And in cases where the patient's kidneys are not strong enough, to tolerate that contrast, we might think of doing other scans. And this scan is called a VQ scan, which is a ventilation perfusion scan. And this looks at which area of the lung is ventilated with air, but it's not perfused. And it wouldn't be perfused because there's a clot blocking that artery or that vessel that's coming into that part of the lung. So we can do a VQ scan, but our gold standard scan is a CTPA scan. So once we've established that a patient has a PE, what do we do next? We need to anticoagulate them, give them medications that stop the clot from growing and in other cases we can give medications that break the clot down. So when I say anticoagulate we can trial low weight molecular heparins, uh, we can treat them with DOACs as well and this just stops the clots from growing. Uh, we can also, in certain cases, for example, if we see that a patient is hemodynamically unstable now, so they have low blood pressure, they have chest pain, their oxygen levels are critically low, we can actually give them a medication known as TPA, which is thrombolytics, and they go and they usually break the clots down. But this is more of this is a very senior decision because there are certain contraindications, uh, and it's a very specialist medication that would be used in those cir in those circumstances. A pearl to take away, a medical pearl, is that when a patient has a PE, there's definitely a cause. So if someone comes with a PE, they don't have any risk factors, you can't put your finger on it. What we have to think about is that certain, well, sometimes PEs can present as the first sign of a malignancy. So for a PE where we're really struggling to find the cause of, we should consider doing a CT abdo and pelvis where we look to see if there's any malignancy in that area which would have predisposed them to having a PE. Um, in terms of long-term management of a PE, what do, what do we do for these patients? So someone's had a PE and having a PE is a risk factor for having another PE and we can't simply just send them home with no long-term plan. So what we would do in these instances is that we would actually put them on a blood thinner and this can be in the form of warfarin or it can be in the form of a DOAC and this would range from three months to six months to maybe lifelong depending on how many PEs they have and what the causes were. Furthermore, another treatment option that's available in people whom we can't use DOAX or warfarin in is to actually have a filter in one of the big veins that come up to the right heart, which is the vena cava, and this filter would stop any blood clots actually coming from the lower limbs and passing into the heart and into the lungs. So thank you very much for tuning into today's pit stop. I hope you found this case beneficial. If you have benefited and would like us to improve pit stops further, please leave your email below and we will send you out some feedback forms and we'd be grateful if you can fill those out. Thank you very much.